Created by Brett. Yeah. Hey Brett, my problem is that I am 12 and I am a great artist, and how do I get noticed fast? I got a two-part plan for this, but first I have to talk about your age. You're 12 and that's a huge advantage. See, when I was young and I would write short stories and send them to magazines, I would say, I'm only 15, you know, I'd sign Brett, age 15 even though I was 16, just to sort of play on them saying, oh, what a young person, let me help them out. Now for everybody watching this, you know, if you're under 20, you really gotta kinda play up that angle. If you're over 20, whatever, you just kinda follow the steps, but you don't play up the age angle. But yeah, for this video, I'm going to assume that you are 12, just like my maturity level. Part one in real life. What you do is you get some art together and then you contact like local media. Might be local magazines or newspapers or you can like approach your school and if they have a school paper, approach them and say, look, I have art. And you can play up the I'm only 12 angle. And you say, I'm trying to become an artist and I want your advice and maybe if you can do a story about me, I'd love to get more press. I'd love to get my art out there. If you want to show some of my art in your newspaper or your magazine, that would be great. If you want to interview me, that would be great. Also, you're in school, so make friends with your art teachers. Get tips from them. They probably have great ideas. They might have connections at local galleries and things like that. Join art clubs, like if there's an art club at your school for the kind of art that you do, join that club. If there's one outside of school, join that too. Just be around other artists who are doing the same thing as you. First of all, it's inspiring. Second, they might have ideas of where you can get your art like shown to the public. They'll know about things like contests and maybe like, oh, this cafe wants some art to put up in their place and gee, I don't have enough of my own art to put up there. Hey, wouldn't you like to put some art up in the cafe with me? We can both have our art up in the cafe. Another place you can go is your church, your synagogue, your mosque, your temple, whatever it is, because they already know you and sometimes they might have a place where they can put up art for a little while. They might even put on like an arts and crafts show and you could get a little you know, card table or something and set it up and show off your art and maybe even sell some to people. As a matter of fact, if there's an art festival in your town, you can, first of all, go to it and, you know, see what other artists do to set up their booth and stuff like that and then maybe talk to parents or somebody into getting a booth at the art festival in your town so you can put up your art in a way similar to the way other people did it and, you know, get it shown to people and, again, play up the angle that you're 12 years old, say, I'm 12 and here's some art that I did and I'm selling it for, you know, $5, $10, $20, $50, whatever it is. And I know the goal is not to make money. The goal is to get your name out there, but if somebody wants to pay you $50 for one piece of your work of art, that would be awesome. And it will be up in their house because they paid money and then it would be up in their house on their wall and then they can tell people, well, there's this 12-year-old artist that I know that's just great and I bought it at a art festival before anybody knew who she was. And a minute ago I mentioned the coffee shop. Well, there are a lot of coffee shops uh, uh, independently owned that have artists, local artists especially, have their art up on their walls. And they'll have a picture up there and they'll have a little price tag next to it. So what you do is you get your parents to help you go and talk to the owners of coffee shops. And say, look, I'm 12 years old, I've made this art, and you bring some art in with you, and you say, I'd love to have it up on your walls and we could split the profits for it, and we can come up with what you think are reasonable prices. Now, the interesting thing about that is that they may think reasonable prices are a lot higher than you would price your own art. So what you have to do is get comfortable with selling your art for more than you thought it was worth. Or it could be that they want to sell it for less than you think it's worth. Anyway, don't get too stuck on the prices because the goal is to get your work up in a cafe or a church or a, a where else, library, places like that. And they put it up there to decorate their place and to support local artists and just to have art on their walls. Plus a cool thing that you can do is if your art is on the walls of a cafe, you can arrange with the owner or a manager or whoever it is to say, hey, why don't I come in on these days, like after school or on the weekend or whatever, and the owner of the cafe will introduce you to the people in the cafe and show how just wonderful you are and just like you're this young, happy artist and happy to have your work up there and will probably get more people to buy more of your art, which makes money for you, gets your name out there, makes you more popular and makes money for the owner of the cafe. So that's all part one in real life. Part two is online. Remember I said to be in any art clubs that you can find that have the same kind of art as you do, other people doing the same kind of art? 
they will know about online contests. You can find online contests yourself and then share those with other people in your art club too. Find websites online that have art contests and enter your stuff. It doesn't matter if you're gonna win, it doesn't matter you know, what category you're gonna be in, any of that stuff, just enter so that people start seeing your name and your art. Make sure one of your parents reads the agreement so that it's not like you upload your images and then the website owns them or something like that. You have to make sure that it's like a legitimate contest. But you don't even have to wait for that. You can start a gallery of your own work on Facebook, on you know any site that you can upload images to. But it's great to have your art on a social website like Facebook because then people will comment, they'll share it, they'll say, hey, look at this great thing, and word will spread about your art. And keep mentioning that you're 12 because adults think that's awesome. If there's a talented young person, they're like, oh my goodness, at that age, I you know, couldn't tie my shoes or whatever. Plus, people are impressed if you can focus, if you can be like, hey, I'm 12 and I know what I want to do. I want to be an artist and I'm good at it and I enjoy doing it and I'm gonna put my stuff out there. People are really impressed with that. If you can have focus on something, mm, yeah. Mm. And also, every time you draw something, you can upload it to Instagram. How easy is that? Just draw or make something, take a picture of it, upload it to Instagram. And the art that you upload doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be ongoing. If you do something new every day or every couple days, put it on Instagram or put it on whatever site you're gonna be on, Facebook or you know whatever you're doing. Because people just wanna see that you keep producing stuff as an artist. There's something appealing about that. And you're gonna get the super fans that are like, oh my God, I love your work, I love everything you do. I, you know, I love all the new things that you're trying. You're my favorite artist. That's pretty cool when people say, you're my favorite artist. I get that every now and then on YouTube. You're my favorite YouTuber. I'm like, what? That's fantastic. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. However, that reminds me of an advanced technique, which is when you are making art, video yourself doing the art. So you have a YouTube channel, and then you video yourself making this art, and then you probably speed it up afterwards, because you know it takes a long time to draw a picture or sculpt something or paint or whatever it is you're doing. So you have this video, you speed it up, maybe you cut out the boring parts so you show just like here's a jump from a blank piece of paper to I'm finishing up the outline of the person, and then here I'm finishing up the shading on the face, and then I'm finishing up the background, and then you know, and it, you compress what was maybe an hour drawing into like a one or two minute video. So you show people from a blank page into a work of art that you have created. And then in the description, you have to include links to your Facebook gallery or your Instagram or wherever it is that you're putting up your art. So then people don't just feel like you're seeing your finished art, which people love, they feel like they're seeing your process of creating the art, which is like behind the scenes, which is even more intimate, which they love even more. But that's a really advanced technique and you don't need to do that. I just, my art right now, one of my main art outlets is video. So I think, well, shoot, make a video about it. But just having the art up on Facebook or in a coffee shop in your hometown or in the newspaper or on Instagram is probably plenty. And if you want to make videos, that would just boost the number of people who find out about you and become fans. Now, the last thing I want to say is about persistence. It's going to take some time for people to find out about your work and for you to build fans. So right now you're 12. If you spend two years at this, you will be 14. If you spend two years doing the same thing, it's gonna make such a difference if you keep focusing on you know, cafes and newspapers and uh, Facebook and Instagram and uh, YouTube videos if you do that. If you do that for two years, you're gonna be so successful, it's amazing. If you keep making new pieces of art, you know, at least a few times a week. It might help you to stick with it if you have a mentor, if you have an older mentor who is an artist, maybe an art teacher, maybe a friend of the family, maybe somebody, you know, just around the community, you know, somebody at church, synagogue, mosque, temple, whatever. And it's great to see the milestones as you go on this long-term plan. You're gonna be like, okay, well, I'm gonna do this for two years and I'm gonna just keep doing it and blah, blah, blah. You're gonna see, you know, hey, this week I got three new fans. Hey, next week I got five new fans. Boy, at the end of two months, I've got, you know, 30 fans who love my work and they're not just saying that they really like the work that I'm doing and in the meantime you are making so much art you will have this amazing body of work you'll have a whole uh, what do they call it a portfolio of your art that you have created just by putting out a new piece every few days. I mean, that's how I started YouTube. I started with one video in 2006. And then I kind of fooled around for a while. I made a video here, a video there, every few months, and didn't really stick with it. In 2010, 
I took, I think, the 30 videos that I made in the last four years, and I put them all on Created by Brett, this channel. And since then, I've uploaded at least one video a week. Sometimes I'd upload up to four videos a week. Now I have 250 videos. I have over 6,000 of you guys have subscribed to me, thank you very much, and over 1 million people have watched my videos. And it's just by the persistence, it's just by sticking with it. And I've done it, what, two and a half years, a little over two and a half years now. So I've made a lot of progress just by being steady like this. If you steadily put up a work of art onto Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're gonna put it up, you know, every few days, you're gonna have a lot of work, you're gonna have a lot of fans, you're gonna have a lot of people looking at your art, you're gonna get successful. Successful, popular, whatever the famous, whatever the word is that you want. So that is my plan for, what's the question? So that is my plan for getting your art noticed. If you're not subscribed yet, please do. And if you have a question for me, just leave it down in the thingy thing. And then if I like your question, then I can answer it. Maybe I'll make a video for you next time. I will, I would think about what makes me happy. What uh, if if you could do anything uh, and get paid to do it for a living? Uh, that's probably a good thing to pursue. Eat chips. Yeah, that's what I want to do for a living. You be a potato tester. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you become popular online? Well, the first thing you got to do is figure out like a brand name. Like I have two. Luckily, uh, my name is unique. Brett Julie. Nobody else in the United States, and maybe even in the world, has that name. But I didn't go with Brett Julie because nobody knows how to spell Julie. So I came up with Created by Brett. And I use it on YouTube, and Twitter, and Facebook, and all over the place. Please share this with